This VizCast will look at a problem where a charged particle is moving through a potential different. Let's begin by interpreting what this question is really about. We can see we have some parallel plates with a potential difference between them. So we're going to need to know something about what electric potential tells us. And this electron initially at rest on one of the plates is accelerated by the electric field between the plates and the question is asking how fast the electron is moving when it strikes the other plate. So electric potential is linked to potential energy and we want to know how fast something is moving when it's changed its electric potential and therefore changed its potential energy. So an important thing to understand in this question is we might want to use something to do with potential energy and maybe its connection to kinetic energy which will tell us something about how fast the electron is moving. So there's some of the important concepts we'll need to be using in our solution. Let's move on to the development of our solution. Let's start with a picture, a diagram of the situation to help us understand what's going on. Here are our parallel plates mentioned in the question and they have some potential difference between them. And there's an electron that's initially at rest on one of the plates and it gets accelerated across to the other plate and we want to know how fast it's moving as it strikes that other plate. So we're told about this potential difference and in our interpretation we thought the potential might relate to kinetic and potential energies in our solution. So let's recall that a potential difference, a voltage as we sometimes refer to it, is really telling us about a difference in potential energy, electric potential energy, per unit charge. So this difference in potential between these two plates can really be thought of as a potential energy difference per unit charge. And in this problem we don't seem to have any other forces being mentioned. There's no mention of whether this is taking place in a gravitational field, whether there's anything that's happening to the electron as it flies between the plates. So we're probably quite reasonable here to assume that our kinetic energy plus our potential energy initially will be the same as it is finally. That is, we're going to assume we can apply the conservation of mechanical energy here. All we have is either kinetic energy or the potential energy from the electric field interaction. Now we can start our evaluation stage. As we've said, we think there's going to be a conservation of energy approach to this problem. So we can look at this and think, well, we know that our initial kinetic energy is zero. We were told that the electron was initially at rest. Our final kinetic energy must be the negative of our final minus initial potential energy. And as with many of these problems, we actually don't really care what the actual voltage value or, or potential energy value is at any one of these plates. We care about what the change in that potential or change in that potential energy might be. This negative sign simply comes by rearranging this formula that we have here in the develop stage. Hopefully that should be clear. And we've got rid of the initial kinetic energy because we know that the electron was initially not moving. And this is of course simply the negative of our change in potential energy. Using our uh, rearranging our formula at the top, this will be the negative of the charge multiplied by the change in potential. This might, to start with, seem a little bit of a problem. There's a negative sign out the front of this. Uh, and you might think, well, is that negative sign important? It really, I've got to keep track of signs here. As with all my solutions, I need to make sure I'm being mathematically consistent and not just throwing negative signs away where I think I don't know what they mean. Important here is that our definitions of electric potential and electric potential energy are all in terms of positive charge. So our definition up here of the potential difference being the change in potential energy per unit charge would mean of course that if the energy increased then the potential must increase for a positive charge. For a negative charge everything goes the other way. So if our energy of the electron, which is a negative charge, was to increase, that would actually mean a decrease in potential and vice versa. So that makes us realize that this electron that's moving from one side to the other must actually be moving to a higher potential, which is the opposite of what you might have thought. So this on this plate, as I've drawn here, must be the higher potential and this on this plate must, plate must be the lower potential. 
that's the opposite of what we normally think that uh, that an object will get accelerated uh, will kind of lose potential energy as it gains kinetic energy that's what we normally think of for example a ball rolling down a hill but because our electron has a negative charge this Q value here will actually be a negative number minus that negative will give me a will give me a positive and so I do need this Delta V here to actually be positive so I do need, as this electron accelerates across, for it to have an increase in potential at the same time as it's increasing its kinetic energy. Again, these negative signs are really quite important. And you might want to just go through, maybe pause the video, and make sure you understand how these negatives all conspire to make sure that my final kinetic energy is indeed a positive value. I don't want to have a final kinetic energy that's negative. That would make no physical sense to me at all. So now I can simply go if my final kinetic energy a half m v squared where v is how fast this electron is moving as it strikes the other plate that must now equal minus q times this change in potential I can rearrange this reasonably straightforwardly here to show this must be minus 2 q delta v divided by m and that was v squared above so this had better be the square root and so there's my expression. I can put some numbers in that now. I'll have minus 2 times the electron charge is minus 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Uh, my potential change is going to be positive. I'm going from low to high with the electron and it's changing by 25 volts. So there's my electric potential change there. And divide that by the mass, the mass of the electron, uh, which in SI units will be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms and I'd better take the square root of that whole thing and then when I do that calculation put those numbers in I wind up with a number that comes out to be 3.0 times 10 to the 6 meters per second let's just double check that's reasonable I've used numbers here for example the electron charge I've only written here to two significant figures so I can really only give my answer here to two significant figures so there's my answer Let's just move up for a second whilst we do a quick assessment to see if this answer indeed does make sense to us. One of the first things we can always try to do is to check that the units make sense in our calculation. So just looking at the units of this expression that we have here for the final speed of our, of our electron, we're going to have units of coulombs for charge, we're going to have uh, units of electric potential, We've got to remember what that is. Well, up here we remembered that electric potential is potential energy per unit charge. So that will be the units of energy divided by the units uh, of charge. And then maybe you might remember that the unit of energy, the joule, in SI units is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So that's energy per coulomb is what my potential will be in. And then I'll divide that by, on the bottom I have a mass in kilograms. So this coulomb cancels this coulomb, this kilogram cancels this kilogram, and I'm left with meter squared per second squared, but of course it's all under a square root sign, so that leaves me with meters per second, which is indeed the unit that I thought I should have, so my units seem to check out. What about the size of this speed, an order of magnitude? It does seem like a pretty high speed. Okay, 3 by 10 to the 6 meters per second, 3,000 kilometers per second. Let's just have a quick look. We, we've basically used an energy equation here where we said that the kinetic energy must equal the change in the potential energy. So for us that was really a half mv squared but being related to q times delta v. And in terms of order of magnitude, well our, our delta v here, our change in potential, 25 volts, that was kind of of order 10. Our electron charge is of order 10 to the minus 19. Over here on the left hand side the mass was of order 10 to the minus 31 or half the mass was of order that. So you can see in order for this calculation, this the magnitude on the left hand side and the magnitude on the right hand side to be the same, it is an equality, we should be able to see that the, the v squared here is going to have to be something on the order of 10 to the 12, which means v should be something on the order of 10 to the 6 and again that checks out quite nicely, quite a high speed that's because although our, our electron has a very small charge it has an even smaller mass in the units that we're using here.